we may not do spf today but we'll do other things which are related with uh, important things which are related with f modules because in this particular rack this is my us rack okay i have f 132 xp module okay there are some m modules also there this is a new model we have already seen m 132 xp right we have already seen m 148 gt this is a new module for us let us check what are the interface capabilities of it because when f boots up you know it boots up as what a uh, access port right so currently if i do show interface brief the f module is in which slot of the chassis three so if i see the three slot of the chassis they are all what ports access right and if you see for the other slot of the chassis which is four slot which is what port router because these are m modules right but by default all of them start with administratively down state right in nexus you do have a command system default switch port shutdown what does this command mean all the access ports are by default shut down routed ports are by default shut down but by default in normal switches all the access ports are up right if you have worked with 3550 3560 all the ports will be up but in nexus they are by default shut down so if you want to turn on all the ports up you just give in front of this no no system default switch port shut down right and do show interface brief now they are not administratively down right they are up some of them are up so the command to make the access port it will not be applicable for which ports routed ports this will be applicable only for access ports i give in front no system default switch port shut down this is to do so that i see my show cdp neighbor and check my cross connections right now the next thing that i'll also check is show interface ethernet 3 slash 1 capabilities mm -hmm. and check what are the port groupings right so here the port grouping is one and two so one two three four five six would be a port grouping so in case you allocate interface one two will go along with it and i actually have made already the cross connections there so these are the cross connections that are there in that particular rack four this is in us okay so in my rack four i have this module is f1 right another this module uh, which is four slash if you do show module that i think is m132 uh, that's m148 gt so this is m1 module that is having 48 ports we don't have much uh, cross connections but f are more cross connections because this lab we generally made it for doing things like fabric path and all okay because we can do fabric path with what modules only f so in this particular case i want to show you the uh, troubleshooting when it lies on doing some SVIs on a F module. Okay, so let us make a small topology to do that troubleshooting. So say we'll make a VDC here. Say I'll make just a simple topology to just do troubleshooting on it. Okay, so this is VDC one, right? And say this is my VDC two. Okay, and in order to do the allocation, I will do the allocation from one of the interface here, right? So three slash one going to three slash twenty one. I could have seen this again the same way. So CDP neighbors, right? So since the interfaces are up, currently if I do show CDP neighbors, I should see that connection. So three slash one goes to whom? Three slash twenty one, and so on, like this itself, right? So if I say had three slash one here allocating and three slash twenty one I'm allocating here. Remember what am I allocating right now? What ports are they? F ports, F module ports, right? So if I go right now and say I'll give the switch name as VDC one for him, and I'll create another VDC because I know VDC one. If I do show VDC membership, all the interface must be allocated to him itself, right? Right now. So there is no need to allocate to him, but I need to allocate to whom? VDC, I'll create another VDC too. So if that's the case, I need to give license grace period. 
and this command is applicable only in default VDC, okay? Since we are running in grace period itself. So we'll create VDC2 and then allocate one of the interface to it. So it can alloc be allocated only when the VDC becomes active. So it's in creation in process. So we cannot go to that VDC right now. Okay, it is being created. So once it's in active state, that's only we can go to that VDC. So we need to wait for some time. It takes around 20 to 30 seconds. So once it's active, then I'll go to VDC, VDC two, two, and allocate interface ethernet three slash 21. Now when I allocate three slash 21, the missing ports will be included automatically, means 21 and 22. So currently, if I do show VDC membership, twenty-one and twenty-two are allocated to that VDC two automatically, right? Now, I say had VLAN ten. Okay, VLAN ten. I make. I want to make a SVI for VLAN ten, right? How do I make it? Feature interface VLAN right interface VLAN 10 give it a IP address say 10.1.1.1 slash 24 no shot now one question to you all will this SVI come up will this SVI come up in VDC 1 in VDC 1 it only has M module right M module is already there. It will do proxy routing, right? So will it come up? It is administratively up, but all the protocol is down. It is not up, right? Why it's not up? Because spanning tree is the one which dictates the SVI will come up or not. So if I check show spanning tree for VLAN 10, there is no interface allocated to VLAN 10. So will a SVI come up? There must be an interface which is allocated to VLAN 10, then only your SPI comes up, right? And that has to be treated by spanning tree in which state? Forwarding state, then only it will come up. That is the first troubleshooting, right? So interface has to have that VLAN and the VLAN must be treated in which state? Forwarding state, then only your SPI comes up. So which interface should I at least make uh, in 3 slash 1, at least let it carry VLAN 10? Or make it a trunk. Trunk automatically carries all the VLANs. Or make it an access port. But access VLAN 10. Then only your XVI comes up. So there are two options here. Either you make it a trunk port and allow VLAN 10 on it. Or either you make it an access port as access VLAN 10 itself. Then your SVI comes up. Right? So since it's a two switch connection, normally we'll have what? Ports, trunk ports. So if I go to interface Ethernet 3 slash 1. I give the command switch port mode as trunk. Right, no shot. So if I do show spanning tree for VLAN 10, it still is not coming up. Why? Interface is down. When I when I allocate an interface to another VDC, what happens? All the configuration of that interface is removed. Although I made the interface up by giving the command no system default switch port shut down, but when I move to another VDC, that configuration is removed. So when, when we go to another VDC, switch to VDC, VDC2. And do here show interface brief, you'll see that that interface is down, right? So it will not come up. Other side will not come up if it's down. So here also, Ethernet 3 slash 21. What will I make here also? Switch port mode, trunk. Can I give no switch port command? Not allowed an F1 module. F1. Maybe allowed in F2 and F2. Right? So this is not allowed here. But what we can do only commands of switch ports. So switch port mode is what? Trunk. And I have to give no shot. When I give no shot, 
that's when when i go switch back and do show interface brief that ethernet 3 slash 1 should come up right and show spanning tree for vlan 10 should consider the vlan 10 in which state forwarding state then so it is going through what states listening learning and Only when that, that is in forwarding state, show IP interface brief right now, shows you still what? Down. Spanning tree has to consider it which state? Forwarding state for it to come up. So when it's forwarding, then I check show IP interface brief, then only it will come up. Right? That is the very important troubleshooting here. So for SVI to come up, you must have one interface, either it's access or a trunk port carrying that VLAN and spanning tree should consider it forwarding, right? Now, if I do the same on VDC2, so let me give no VDC combined host name because I don't want to see the names as combined. I'll go again, switch to, to my VDC2. Here, also, I'll make what to say, VLAN 10. Here also I'll create a SVI, so I'll give the command feature interface VLAN. Here also I'll make interface VLAN 10 and give it a IP address. Right? Now here I already have a trunk interface that is carrying that VLAN 10. Right? So spanning tree for VLAN 10. It's already in which state? Forwarding state, right? Show IP interface brief. Though still showing me down, right? Should have come up. But what is a problem? This is a different problem now. This particular VDC has what module only? F module. F module, if it is there and you try to create a SVI, it will never come up. We have to have a M module also allocated, one interface allocated to that VDC for this SVI to come up. Because as, as I told, F1 cannot do routing on its own. It has to have a M module which will do routing for it, a proxy routing for it. So what should I do then in order to bring this SVI up then? Switch back, go to VDC1 and c show module you check any module you take right it should be what module though m so you can take an interface from here also interface from here also interface from here also anyone let us take a interface from here right what is the port grouping for this just no port groupings are there for 48 right for 32 we have to port groupings of four in odd and even right this has no port groupings so if it has no port groupings i don't have a problem in assigning it so i go to vdc which vdc vdc2 i allocate which interface ethernet any any one of that port slash one you just need to allocate it that interface may not be up why because proxy routing doesn't happen through outside interface right proxy app routing happens in the back plane right through the fabric inside the chassis so this interface may not be up it's not required that this interface is up. So I allocate the interface to it. Which VDC did I allocate? Uh, M module interface I allocate to VDC2. Let us go to now VDC2. And let us check show interface brief. So that should have my M module. It is down, doesn't matter. Because it's not required to be up to do forwarding. It's required to be up to do forwarding outside. It's required, not required to be up to do forwarding inside, right? We are doing forwarding what? In the back plane. Proxy routing happens in the back plane. So if I now do show IP interface brief, is when your SVI comes up after you allocate any interface of M module. So this is a very important troubleshooting for your exam point of view. Okay. On the other interface for M module, you don't need to do anything. No, because it already was up, right? VDC1, it already had M module. It already has a M module. All the interfaces are allocated to it, right? 4 slash is there. So you, after allocation, uh, that will be VDC. Uh -huh. 
No, no need of doing it. You can use the interface for doing any other connections, but you just need it for doing proxy routing for X. Right? Uh, they need default. Ah. And you are doing all of this stuff. So does default with BDC uh, choose a real mass scanning or accessing or routing stuff or how it needs to be organized that thing on F it depends upon the module types, right? F means access. M means routed. Ah. Ah. VLAN is automatically up. Ah. Ah. So that's the default to BBC detects automatically on the model or I need the VLAN depends like if the VLAN I create and I create a VLAN in which VDC I created that. Now if it's VDC one, then all the modules are by default in VDC one, right? All the modules are by default a part of VDC one. So that VLAN will be present in all the modules then. But in case you had a port of that module in another VDC, the whole module was on another VDC, say, then that VLAN will not be present on that module. It depends where you are, in which VDC you are in. Because my tables are up updated as I saw, show in the VDC slide, right? We had seen that once. A MAC address A was learned by not all modules. It depends that module contains that VDC or not. So it depends again. Okay. Always Cisco answer is it depends. Any Cisco question you ask, it depends because there are not one way of doing it. There are several ways of doing it. Well, for instance, I was in VDC two. Uh -huh. and I was associated with the F one F one one. Uh -huh. But after getting VLAN, it didn't respond to do routing whatever until I associated the you know from M module. M module, yes. M -module. Yeah. So my question is, when I'm in VDC uh, one. Uh -huh. I assume that they don't know there is M2. You don't know. You don't have M2. Yeah. I assume there is no M. There is no M. There is only F. There is no chance that your SVI will come up then. You have to have an M module for your SVI to come up. But it's not required if you are using F2, F2E, F3 line cards. You don't require it. It's only a requirement for F1. Okay. And this is the reason why it's end of sale. It's no more sold by Cisco, but still we have to do it because we are poor guys, right? But as you know that the process lines have been upset, right? Yeah. But how can you forwarding the traffic? It's not forwarding the traffic outside. It's forwarding the traffic inside. Yes. Internal, yes. Internal. Not outside. Do you understand this, guys? Very important to understand this, okay? Then uh, later, so Monday we'll do OSPF and all those things. This is the most important thing. 